Hi everyone, it's Deb from Deb's RV Services and welcome to today's video. Spring is in the air and today we're going to talk all about RVs and some things that you could do during the spring cleaning time and some preventative maintenance. So the first thing I want to talk about is dewinterizing. In some areas, there people store their RVs for the winter and then they, um, they winterize it and then when they pull it out in the springtime, they dewinterize it. So that's one of the first things that you'll need to do when you pull your RV out is you're going to need to dewinterize it. And that includes getting flushing out all of the antifreeze and then running water through it, cleaning it out, replacing your anode rod if you have one for your water heater or your drain plug, and then putting your taking your um, water heater off of bypass. So if you want to know more information about how to care for your water heater and how to dewinterize it, you can check with the manual of your RV. So one of the other things that um, you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have an, your air conditioner cleaned. So something that is a good thing to do every year is cleaning your air conditioner. You develop um, like dirt, debris, hair from dogs, and it gets in the coils of the air conditioner and it can cause it to not run efficiently. So what I recommend is every year have either tech come out or you can try to do this yourself. Now I will get a video, I'm gonna clean mine, so I will get a video of that process and I will demonstrate each step for you guys and make a video. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and then when that video comes out, you can watch it if you want to do it yourself and save some money. But you can hire somebody. I've cleaned a lot of air conditioners and basically you use a, a coil cleaner that's a no rinse and there's a little scrub brushy that comes with it. And you're going to you're going to take the shroud off of the air conditioner on top of the roof and you're going to spray the coils and you're going to clean it with that scrub brush. And you're also going to look and make sure that there aren't any um, coils that are bent. Um, or smash down because that can cause the air conditioner not to run efficiently as well. And I do have other videos on here that talks about the air conditioner and efficiency and stuff. Uh, you can look in my playlist and, and kind of scroll through. I have some various videos on here on water heaters and air conditioners and different things, some of the components on the RVs. So I go into more detail on that. But overall, you want to make sure you're cleaning the air conditioner and you're cleaning the filters out because it gets dirty and it prevents it from working correctly. And when you get to summer, you wanna make sure that that air conditioner is a working proper. Now, while you're on the roof, it, you're gonna also check the sealant. It's really important when you, uh, every, when you start every season, I would do it a couple times a year, actually, especially it depends on the, the area that you are. If you're storing your RV for the winter and you have a cover on it, you can just do that check once a year. But if you're living somewhere like I am in Arizona, where you have sun exposure all the time, I'm getting on that roof uh, twice a year, probably even more, and I'm looking at the sealant to make sure that there's no cracks and holes in it. So you want to look at that, and if there are any cracks and holes, you want to make sure that you're repairing that sealant. And there's another, um, there's a whole method on how to do that if you wanted to do it yourself. I do have some videos out there, but I would like to refresh some of my older videos and make some better videos on how to replace and repair sealant. But there are a lot, this, there's lots of information out there, but you need to make sure that you're cleaning it first and then you're repairing it with a proper sealant type because there are different types of sealant out there. It depends on what your roof has, what type of roof you have, and then what type of sealant was used. But you never want to just keep recoding the sealant you want to replace the sealant after the second time that you patch it up. So you can have the original sealant, you can have a patch up job, and then you want to just tear off that old sealant and replace all of it. And it's not just for the roof. Make sure that you're doing it for the sidewalls as well. Some people, what's around all of the um, accessory panels and cargo doors and refrigerator vents and, and things like that, so you're looking at all that sealant. The next thing that you want to look at is cleaning your furnace. So you can get an entire furnace cleaning and it's a very extensive job that you would want to hire a tech for. And in that job, they are removing the whole furnace and they are clearing out debris. They're taking compressed air and blowing it through all the areas to make sure 
that it, they're clean from hair, dander, debris, bugs, everything. Removing the re burner assembly and making sure that there's no cracks or anything and make sure it's clear of debris. So that's something that you can hire somebody for that is very, it's more time consuming. It's gonna be a little bit more costly, but as a general rule, you can clear debris from your own furnace by opening up that area where your furnace is. Now, some people, they have the more difficult type where you have to go from the inside and access the furnace. But those of you that have the external panel where you just take your drill and you unscrew like the four um, screws and then you pull out that uh, cover, you can take compressed air in a can and you can kind of spray off some of the areas. Now I have seen sail switches that have dog hair on them. I helped a woman the other day with a furnace that wasn't working correctly and noticed that she had some debris on her sail switch. So I went ahead and I blew out that area and got rid of that hair. And that is just one little thing that can happen that can prevent your furnace from working correctly. And even in the spring and summer, you have those cold mornings when you start out camping that you definitely want your furnace to work correctly. So the next thing I'm gonna recommend is cleaning the slide seals. So you want to make sure that you're keeping up with the maintenance on your seals. Those rubber seals can get cracked and worn and they can collect dust and stuff throughout the year. So there is some, there is a spray made by Camco that is something that I recommend you can use. And all you need to do is you can spray Put the spray along the seals and then take a dry cloth and you're just going to kind of wipe that off you don't need to put water on it or clean it off that way you can just take your cloth and wipe it down and you're just going to basically wipe the inside and outside of the seal and you're going to go up and down all around your slide outs you want to make sure that you do that once a year it's going to help them work correctly you always want to make sure that your your slide out seals those wiper blades are extracted when the slide comes out and not staying in, they, they, what they tend to do is stay tucked in there. And that is what allows water intrusion. So clean those seals out. You can hire somebody to do this as well, but you can also do it on your own. It just depends on what you would rather have. But I just wanted to give you the product name and a general idea of how you can do it um, in this video so that you know that you can kind of handle some of these maintenance items yourself. The other thing that I want to talk about is checking your batteries. You want to make sure that if you had your RV stored in the winter that you had a trickle charge on your batteries or your batteries could end up dead and you'll need to replace them. You want to have a good voltage in your battery. You can check it if you know how to use a voltmeter and you or you could just check if you have one of those meters inside of your RV that tells you you want to have between like 12.6 and 12.8 on a really good battery. And so if you have good battery voltage and you also have good connections, you want to make sure that the connections around the battery are good and there's not debris around them or corrosion. And you also want to make sure if you have the, if you don't have AGM batteries and you have the regular lead acid batteries that require maintenance that you take off that cap and you look and see if you need some distilled water in there. So that is what it takes when you're uh, maintaining the water levels in there. You want to use distilled only. So again, you can hire somebody to check these out for you if you're not comfortable with it. But if you are, just make sure you check the, the um, water level in your batteries. The next thing on the list is having chassis work done. So if you have a motor home, you wanna make sure that you're getting some chassis work done. And that includes things like, you know, checking the oil levels and do you need any flushes? Um, I make sure that I get my oil changes as recommended by my manufacturer. And also I check the levels, I go take it in and I make sure that the transmission looks good, the um, oil looks good, my coolant looks good. And if any of those need to be flushed, I make sure that I have them flushed. You also want to have your steering components checked. I would have them checked annually. You wanna make sure that you have your brakes checked, your bearings. You want to look at your tires and make sure that they are um, at proper PSI. You wanna check the dates of your tires and make sure that they're not over five years old. 
If they're over five years old, you want to look at having them replaced. That is the recommended um, time frame for having your, your um, tires replaced. And also look for check marks on your tires. Look and see if they're wearing early. So I have seen tires as early as one year or brand new tires that have shown check marks on them already. So sun exposure is going to wear out your tires a little quicker. So if you don't have tire covers and they're always exposed to the sun, make sure you're checking your tires to see if they have, are showing signs of checking, which means they're showing signs of wear and you want to look at getting them replaced. Having a blowout on the road is no fun. So please keep up with your tire maintenance and then having everything else looked at underneath and make sure that you are ready to go for your season, for your vacation. The next thing on the list are safety items. You want to replace your alarms in your RV or travel trailer fifth wheel every five years. Most of them are five years, some are longer. You have a propane and carbon monoxide detector and that is so important to have replaced. I can't stress the importance of having that one replaced, especially because if there is something like carbon monoxide in the air, you are not gonna smell it and you, it could be fatal. So you don't wanna mess around with something like that. So have those alarms replaced as uh, on the propane detector, a lot of times they will have dates on there that'll say, you know, 60, or 180 days. I can't remember exactly. Like it's, they'll have something on there that says 60 days from the date that uh, um, it was placed on. So it actually goes from the date that it was turned on the first time. So when the RV was new, they put a propane detector in there. And the minute you started, it was turned on and started functioning with 12 volt is, is from that date that you want to have it replaced. So on average, it's five years. But, um, and those things are about around $100. Um, that's the last price check I've done on them. And they're around 100 to replace. The other smoke alarms, they're not as expensive. And you want to have those replaced every, I think the rule changed to every seven years on the smoke alarm. I will double check that and just link it below and tell you if that's correct or not. I believe it did change to seven years. But you want to have your... Um, fire extinguisher looked at, make sure that it's in a charged state as well. So make sure that you have all your life safety items checked every year to see if you need any of them replaced. The other thing I wanna talk about are the connections you have. So you can spray different connections along your RV or your travel trailer, uh, connections, the rubber, the cranks. Um, something that you can get is a spray called T9 and it is a dry loop and that is recommended to use on things like uh, it's good for rust protection it's good for your jacks your hitches your t-valves that run out for your tanks your windows the window tracks they help them slide easier back and forth you have your leaf springs and your locks so that dry lube is really good for those things you can get something like a 303 protectant, and that can be good for all the things that are rubber, plastic, or gaskets in your RV. So make sure that you're going through and you're having everything looked at um, when springtime comes and just keeping up with the maintenance of the, you know, spraying on those areas because the last thing you want is to deal with some rusty component that's, you know, not working correctly and, you know, it's frustrating when it gets to that point. So something else that I wanted to mention, the last thing on my list is if you are planning to get a new RV, say you're not pulling out your old RV or you are thinking about selling your old RV and getting something new. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, one of the other services that an inspector can do for you is provide an inspection prior to you selling your RV. I think it's a great idea and I have a couple clients that I'm doing that for right now they are planning on selling their RV, but they would like a very nice detailed report that shows everything working on their RV. They want to have the really nice pictures and a report that when they have people come in, potential buyers, they can look at this report and it will show them a complete VIN report that's been pulled that I, that I um, handle for you, um, pictures, and it gives you a whole exterior view, an interior view, the roof, the underneath, and it's going to show them all the components working. It has videos in it. 
And what a nice way for you to help market your RV by selling it to somebody and showing that you've had a certified inspection. So that's one of the things that I wanted to mention to you that's also good for you, not only if you were going to buy an RV and you wanted to hire the certified inspector to come out and show you that everything is working, but also if you're going to sell your RV, you can do the same thing. So I hope with all this information that you got some great tips for the season and it's exciting times to get out there and start traveling this spring and summer. Um, if you uh, have any other questions or any comments, please comment below, let me know. Check out some of my other videos. I do have things in there from the past on how other things work, like Water Heaters 101, and I have some other videos in there, like how to um, replace sealant. But I'm gonna do some new videos now that I've been doing the, you know, been in the business a little bit longer, and I'm gonna try to make some better videos on it. Some of my older videos are like, eh. So I'm gonna get some better videos out there. So thank you, and I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next video.